Hi, I'm Ryan with Rapid Spectra Solutions, and this is your guide to thin film coatings and interference filters. What is an optical filter to begin with? Just to make sure we have a baseline to work with. So an optical filter is a device that selectively transmits light of different wavelengths. So you can think about it as the most typical example being a bandpass filter. If I only want to see green light and I'm not interested in red or blue, well then an optical filter is there for me, right? It just will let me see the green light in the environment but without seeing the red or blue. And that's that has applications in all kinds of fields and we'll touch on that later. But I have some examples here. So this is an optical filter. As you can tell, it's a red optical filter. This is an absorption filter. So an absorption filter is one of the two main kinds of optical filters. So it works by absorbing the light that it doesn't want to transmit and transmitting the other light. So the important part of that is it's taking energy from the other colors of light, right? Or wavelengths, you know, not just colors. So as you can see from this you know, slight example, uh, of a green absorption filter, what it's doing is it's letting through primarily what it wants and, you know, taking some energy or it's taking some transmission out of the other colors, right? So that's why this gives everything a red tint. These are the cheapest options available generally. They can even just be dyed glass. It, it, you know, if you're throwing a party and you want like a Halloween vibe, there you go, okay? So those are just very simple, very cheap filters. But I have interference filters here. These are special. We'll touch more on what the layers mean. But you can see here that it works by actually reflecting specific light, and that can be a lot more helpful in getting rid of what you don't want. Well, absorption filters are cheap options. They are great at making everything appear a certain color. An interference filter is great at actually just only showing you a specific color. In other words, interference filters, better blockers than absorption filters. If you think about the transmission on a spectrum going from blue to red, you'll see that, you know, it would show a lot of blue and then go down and show little red but an interference filter would show blue and just you can have a lot of a steeper drop basically with interference filters and then show even less so i have a good example here here's that blue absorption filter i showed again right if you notice the dice on my shirt, you can still see that they're red, right? Obviously, it's tinting everything blue, so this appears red because it's just redder than everything around it. But you can still tell it's red. That's because, you know, it's being shown to you. Let me show you something cool. So green is even closer to red on the transmission spectrum. So if I show you this green interference filter, you'll think, you know, okay, same thing, big whoop you can barely see the dice if at all you can a little bit see that one in the top of this one but that's because it's just not showing the red right so it 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 makes other colors disappear they get reflected straight off that's also why this appears far more reflective than this does right this one's kind of just putting everything through it this one you could use as a mirror if you wanted So here's another example. Um, you see this one is an orangey red interference filter. And something interesting you'll notice if you paid attention to the last one is see how the center of the screen is orange and towards the outside here is more of a yellow green. And you would notice as well with the other green filter, the outside was more of a blue, right? Well, 
That's because uh, interference filters can be used at angles to actually show different colors. And here, I'll show that for you. So this orange filter, I'm going to get a bright light source to drown out all the other light in uh, the environment around us. Here we have an orange interference filter, right? Coming through a phone flashlight. But there's something interesting about this because if I turn it, you see how that happens? It's the same filter. See, and you can see where its peak is based on when it stops, right? So here, the most transmission, the biggest ring, like colored ring around it. You can see that orange ring, that red orange ring. And you'll see that ring gets smaller as the transmission is less, but also change color, right? So also because it's a steeper angle to the camera, you can also see it if I just move it. Like if this, and then you'll see it. See, that's how it was working before. So you can also see it just like that. That's one of the interesting parts about an interference filter is that they can be used at angles to actually show different transmissions. So you can fine tune them. If this is slightly off what you want for a slight loss in transmission, you can actually turn it, right? To conclude on this quick section, an absorption filter absorbs the colors and lets through primarily the color you want, but also the colors around it. It's more of a tint to the environment. Even a really, really good absorption filter can't be as good at blocking out other colors as a middle of the road interference filter. An interference filter, while more expensive, is far more precise at blocking. Once again, with the green, my dice disappear. Right. While I'm showing you some main examples of bandpass filters, one of the most commonly used interference filters in terms of to the average person would probably be a neutral density filter. Now these are used in photography as basically a real life brightness dial. You can take the brightness and just turn it down. And I have two examples here for you. These are graded using uh, optical density which we'll touch more on in a future video, but is basically a logarithmic scale for how much it, light it blocks. So this is an OD1, so it lets through 10% of light. So you can see it just makes everything darker. You know, so that's great, right? And you can, there are neutral densities for whatever percentage of light you want, whatever optical density you want, for the most part. But this is an optical density 2.5 neutral density filter. So this has a transmission of approximately 0.3%. So here's what that looks like. You'll notice that it's letting through basically nothing. And no, I didn't turn my camera off because here's that phone flashlight again. So neutral density filters come in all types, but the interesting part of the interference filters is that you can have a neutral density filter that's getting rid of ultraviolet light or infrared light, and that can be used in like astronomy, for example. If you're taking a picture of the sun, you want the wavelengths that are the sun's rays but you don't want everything else because that causes what's called light pollution. So we would offer a light pollution filter, otherwise known as a nebula filter, which is going to let through the range of light that you want, turn it down, turn down the brightness so you can reduce the ring, if you remember, from the flashlight. So you can reduce that overall brightness, but just completely block everything else out. So it's not like you're making the sun suddenly this tiny little speck in the sky. You're suddenly making the sun the only thing in the sky. So it can really help when it comes to um, 
photography. Okay. So some other examples of where you could use an interference filter are in the biosciences with um, fluorescence as one example. If you ever took a biology class, it's likely that you have at least heard of a concept called fluorescence, which fluorescence is what happens when light enters an organism and that organism emits a different light. So to, to think of this, if there was an organism that took in blue light and put out green light, and only that organism did that, we could then use that to identify what kind of organism it is. So that's where interference filters come in. Because if you just showed white light at it, okay, sure, it would emit the green light, but it would be hard to detect. And even if you could detect the green showing more than the white light, like confidently, you don't know what light is causing it to emit the green. So that's where these optical filters come in, and especially interference filters, especially because you have the, the color selection from turning it. So these fluorescence filters let you see specifically tune it to that blue light that makes that organism emit that green. And then you know, okay, so for example, this 400 nanometer light is what makes that organism emit this. Okay, so that organism must be one of these, right? So it can help for identifying um, organisms. And then, you know, just as a brief idea, it's also used in aerospace, in defense, in all of these areas that use lasers. Because if I'm building something that I want to communicate with, with infrared, I don't want it getting confused from like the rays of the sun and really any other kind of light source. I only want it to care about the infrared. So I would use a filter that blocks everything but the infrared uh, wavelengths that I'm using, right? That way I can communicate with uh, the device, the drone, whatever it is. Now you know some of the differences between an absorption filter and an interference filter and the use cases of an interference filter but what is thin film and how is it used to make an interference filter so thin film is as it sounds it's a thin film aka like a coating on any kind of material called a substrate so in terms of optical filters thin film is a thin coating of a selected material with a refractive index that is ideal for the scenario layered on top of a type of glass that we choose alternated with another material so the most common idea of this would just be stacks of materials with a spacer in between and another stack of materials right so this is done with you know a deposition chamber and we can go into another whole whole other video on that if you are interested um, but as a brief overview, an interference filter is just constructed with layers of material uh, that are spread thinly on top, right, and, and evenly. The thin coatings of material is not only obviously what causes the reflecting of unwanted wavelengths, but also if you think about how the light is entering the filter, it's also what causes the uh, change of color based on angle entered, right? The filters found today I found on RSS's filter database, which can be found at filter-database.web.app. It's new, it's open to feedback, but we would love if you would try it out, whether you're purchasing or not, the feedback is appreciated. Um, and all of the filters talked about today are available on this tool or you can go to rapidspectrosolutions.com as you can see behind me uh, this is just a small 
small fraction of the filters available in our facility. It is all around us. We have 100,000 filters available for you when you need them. So let us know if you find something on our inventory or if you need something that might not be in our inventory and we can uh, get that for you for the right price. Uh, you're saving money with Rapid Spectra Solutions because the filters are already made and we will not need to make them for you. And we will work with you on your project to make sure you get the right thing you need. If you're not sure which filter you need, but you know that you're going to need one, the experts here at Rapid Spectral Solutions can help you find exactly what you need.